Welcome back guys, Nick here again for a, another Cinema 4D tutorial. Um, so this is going to be the basics part 2, because there was uh, a little bit of stuff that I didn't cover in the first video, or else it would have been like half an hour to 45 minutes long, and nobody wants to watch a video that long. So I'm going to try to keep this half decently short. So I realized I forgot to show you something about the text object, more specifically the extrude object in the last video. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys that right now. So again we're going to add our text. So I'm going to highlight on our pen, click and hold, I'm going to drag over text and I'm going to let go. And that's going to put our text object into our scene, or our text spline. And I'm going to grab our extrude object to make this an actual 3D object. So I'm going to come over to here to the little green ball in the cage, click on that, and drag over to extrude, and let go. And then I'm going to click and drag on our text till the arrow is pointing down over our extrude, and drop it in there. And that makes it a child of the extrude object. So I showed you guys the text object yesterday, how you can change the font, change what it says, you can change a bunch of stuff, change it to Nick, um, you can change the font quickly here, change a random one, it's a really ugly font, you can change it to well, any font that you got on your computer. Um, but what I actually didn't end up showing you guys was the extrude object itself. So this has a couple of cool little features that um, are actually pretty useful and well more than pretty useful. So if you click on the extrude object under the objects tab um, there's multiple different little options but the main one that we want to view and manipulate is the movement. So you'll notice that these two are 0 and then the last one is 20. This is the depth of our object. So if I go ahead here and raise this depth, the text is going to get deeper, longer, however you want to say it. And um, So you can make it really long, you can make it half decently long, so that's one of the things that I wanted to go over yesterday, not yesterday, but um, in the last video, but I forgot. And the other thing is under the caps tab. So everything, mostly everything is grayed out here, except a few of these little drop down menus. And what we're going to do here is there's an option under cap. So if we click on cap in the drop down menu, it says none, cap, fillet, and fillet cap. I'm going to go ahead and select fillet cap. And this is essentially what we were doing to that cube in the first video, where we can add this nice little rounded edge onto our objects. So the start, the first one, does the front of the object, and then the second one does the back of the object. Um, you can also choose how many steps you want on this uh, fillet this curve, this little edge. If you want it smoother or just one solid surface, I usually stick with one step. I find it makes it look nice when you get into uh, lighting and reflections and stuff, but that's for later. Alright, so now that we have our um, text object, we made it deeper a little bit. Oh yeah, I'll have to I'll go ahead and remove so, ignore what I just, I had a global illumination setting on, which I'll cover after. So, when I go ahead and render, we got this dark grayish blue text, it's boring. Um, so, let's say you wanted to change the color of this text, which almost every single person is going to want to change the color of something when they're using this program. So, what we're going to go do is create a material. So down in this bar, on the bottom, 
you can either click on the create tab and go up to create new material or you can simply just double click in the bar double clicking is a little bit faster so it automatically makes this default material which if you click and drag onto the object it changes the color of the material to whatever the color of that that um, material is so if we want to go ahead and start um, adjusting that color we can double click on the material itself and it opens up a material editor so there's tons of different options in here I think the um, original one is like this when you very first open it up so I just click on the square gradient from white to black and it gives us this nice little square that we can choose our colors so I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a a little blue here something like that you can be more spe specific in the future but for now we're just gonna grab that so if I drag this window to the side you notice that my text changes every single time I change um, the color of it so when I render it's that color there's tons of different little tabs here every single one does an entirely new thing but for now I'm just gonna cover the color and then we can get into um, luminance transparencies reflectance all of this the bump maps there's so many different things you can do in this material editor but for now I'm just gonna cover the bare minimum the color so I'm gonna go ahead and close that so now our scene is looking pretty dull and usually a nice way to change that is to add some lights so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a spotlight which is this one here so that's under the light bulb so if we click and drag to the spotlight and then let go so if I don't do anything and I just click our scene is completely black um, don't panic that's just because our light object isn't pointing at our object so it's not lighting anything up so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open up our four little windows by either clicking on this little uh, window in the top right corner or just center clicking middle clicking on that mouse scroll reel does the same thing and now we can see more accurately and more simply where the light is so I'm just gonna drag it back center it a little bit I'm gonna drag it um, up so it's up above now when I go ahead and render that it's still black well that's because our light object this cone shape is where it's shining so it really isn't shining at our object so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click our rotate and I'm just gonna rotate it down so it is shining at our object so now when I go ahead and render you can see very small portion of the text so on our um, light object I'm just gonna go back to the move tool from the rotate tool there's the cone and it's got these little orange squares if we click and drag on one of those it opens up the light so now when we render it we can see a little bit more it's a little bit nicer so I'm just gonna open it up a little bit more like so and then when we render it we can see our full text right here so the next step that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a floor because usually when you're working with text and different objects you like to have a base something for them to sit on um, cast shadows on it makes it look nicer so I'm gonna go up to this square with the the grid pattern on it and I'm just gonna select floor which is the floor um, emblem logo thing however you want to say it. so my floor I'm just gonna position it at the bottom of our text and now when I render render it has a floor it's sitting on which is much nicer um, the floor is pretty dark so I'm just gonna quickly go ahead and double click in our 
materials slot and I'm just going to apply the default material to the floor and it's just going to lighten it up a little bit. Now, you might be saying this looks even worse than it did before but what we're going to do here is I'm just going to drag the light back a little bit and I'm just going to drag this um, there's one that's further and it kind of just uniformly expands along does um, the other ones so you can play with that and now when I render it's a little bit nicer so I'm going to add some shadows to this scene so I'm going to click on our light I'm going to come down to the shadow section and I like to use Shadow Map Soft. I feel like that's the um, the nicest looking shadows. And now when I render, you get some some shadows casting off onto that onto that floor that we put there. I'm just gonna bring this in a little bit to emphasize the shadows. So it's still looking all right now. It's pretty good. Nothing fancy, but we're getting there. There's tons of different options here. You can change the color of the light. You can make it blue, yellow. You can make it project whatever colors you want. You can make it so you can see the physical light. There's tons of stuff that you can do with it. But for now, we're just going to leave it at is. You can quickly swap between light types under the type one. So you can go under a spotlight, an area light, um, a normal light, an omni light, which is just it lights up the entire scene which is also pretty nice so I think I'm gonna keep it with that one for now um, the last little thing I want to go over in this video is bare minimum global illumination so what global illumination does is it kinda of simulates the real world lighting circumstances so simply put um, it renders light more realistically could go way more into detail but I'll just show you what I mean so when I click render without global illumination you get these super hard shadows um, the sides of the letters are very dark uh, in small little crevices where the light can't hit it's very very dark but if we go into our render settings so it's the um, the movie clacker looking thing with the the settings wheel the cog on it I'm gonna click that and underneath our list of options I'm just gonna right click and go to global illumination I'm not even gonna mess around with any of the settings I'm just gonna X that out so now when I render it's gonna take much longer but it simulates light in different directions bouncing off different things and it gives it a more realistic lighting so now you can see some of these sides that were just black before our they're slightly darker they're they're more properly lit um, you can go into massive detail with different um, lighting setups you can Global Illumination is a fantastic tool. Um, we'll go more into depth with Global Illumination in the future, but for now, it's just an option that you guys can play around with. Um, but yeah, so it pretty much just helps simulate real-world lighting. Um, that is going to be it for our uh, Basics Video 2. Uh, we're going to continue on just we're going to try to cover as much as we can if you guys want to see any specific um, any specific effector or certain modeling technique or anything that you are were asking about you can leave it in the comments as a question and I can maybe make a video answering it um, if you liked the video leave a like uh, if you like the content and are excited for more in the future then subscribe and then we'll have tons of content on Cinema 4D in the future and we're going to attempt to go over this entire program and then show you some cool little animation tricks modeling tricks on the way so 
that's it there, guys. Uh, this is Nick, and uh, thanks for watching another video. See ya.